Hello fleet and welcome back to another episode of Captain's Academy with your instructor Chase and in today's episode what I would like to talk to you about is how to hit things reliably at longer ranges. Now one of the things about this game is that there is a certain degree of RNG, there's a certain degree of randomness to each and every shot. So you're not always going to hit everything perfectly. There is a certain element that is out of your control. However, you've probably realized that a lot of the better players in the game seem to be able to hit shots on a much more reliable uh, level. And so hopefully um, what I will be doing during this video is explaining to you what kind of information we use, how do we use it, and how do we calculate our shots, and then hopefully you can use that in battle and become a much better player. Do remember, however, that the good players in the game and they're you know the ones who hit stuff reliably, they have been practicing a lot you know through all the different various stages of the testing. So don't be disheartened if it doesn't work for you right away. If you keep at it, you will get better. So what do you actually need in order to hit things reliably? Well, you need five pieces of information in order to formulate a firing solution. You need the shelf flight time. You need the range to your reticle. You need the range to the target in the enemy ship direction and you also need the enemy ship speed and once you have those five things and you formulate that firing solution you fire everything you've got and hope you hit something of course hitting is not always gonna happen sometimes you miss and so if you miss the next thing you need to do is you need to adjust your lead at the beginning when you're first learning how to shoot how to lead how to make those adjustments it might not be so wise to fire entire salvos because the time especially for battleships where you know the reload time is in the range of 30 seconds it's a very long time to wait and wait and wait a lot of things change during that period of time and so what you might want to do is instead of shooting full salvos is you adopt a shoot one make the adjustment shoot the rest kind of approach Although when you do become much more experienced, you are just able to fire full salvos, adjust fire full salvos, and everything should be fine there. The last thing that I do have to point out is that practice is key. Practice makes perfect in World of Warships, and you know, don't expect to be immediately great at this even after watching this video, but understand that this video is going to give you the basics of how to start hitting stuff, and then the rest of it's just you fine-tuning your own mechanics to get better and better at it. The first three pieces of information, the shelf flight time, the distance to your reticle, and the distance to target are very easily gained um, by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard or enabling alternative battle interface mode in the settings. And I'll show you how to do the setting thing in a second here. But if you hold down the Alt key, you will see the numbers under your reticle pop up. One of these numbers is in seconds, and that is how long it takes your shells to travel to where you're aiming. The other one is the exact distance to where you're aiming. And both of these two pieces of information are extremely critical when you're trying to figure out exactly where to aim to hit your target. In order to enable the alternative battle interface mode, go to settings, go to controls, and there's a thing there I circled in red that says alternative battle interface mode. And you basically click that to enable the numbers to appear permanently so you don't always have to hold down the alt key, which after a while of holding down the alt key, your thumb really does hurt. I know, I had to do that before we actually had this option uh, in the settings screen. Okay, so once you've done that, you're going to have you know, three really important pieces of information, but it's not everything you need. You do also need the direction of travel, and you also need the speed, and I'll show you exactly how to get that. I think one of the somewhat common uh, misconceptions about how to get uh, a sense of where the enemy ship's moving to is to actually look at the ship, you know, the actual ship model. But the actual ship model itself is actually somewhat deceptive. And you can actually get fooled by looking at the ship model. The best way to confirm and to know exactly where the ship is moving is actually to take a quick look at your mini map. Look at the icon for that particular ship, and you will see exactly which angle they're pointed at. In this particular picture, I can see that the red uh, battleship is definitely heading towards me, which means if I'm going to aim at that battleship, I have to aim a little bit forward of where the ship is so my shots will hit when the ship actually gets there. Let's take a quick look at this actual thing being put into practice here. So there was that battleship I was looking at. I know he's approaching me, so I know to lead uh, short of where his current distance says he is, because I know that by the time my shells get there, he would have traveled that distance and essentially would have run himself into my shells. In this particular case, take a look there, 
Shells landed. Citadel, 4 hits, 15,000 damage. Quite a substantial amount of damage onto that battleship. And finally, there is one last variable, which is speed. And while you won't get an exact number for how fast the ship is moving, there are certain visual references you can use. One is just how much the smoke is moving. So you can have, um, you know, when the ship is slower, you can have more vertical smoke. And when you're going faster, the smoke is more pushed back as the ship moves faster. In these four clips, you've seen the ship move at a quarter, a half, three quarters, and full speed. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that there's subtle differences with regards to the smoke coming out of the smokestacks. So with that, now that we all, have all this information, how do we actually use it to create a firing solution? So what I want to do here is walk you through one of my shots and explain to you how I managed to think it through and why I ended up shooting where I did. So let's first start with this battle, and it's against an enemy Otago and of course at a reasonably close range, approximately only 12.7 kilometers. So the very first piece of information that I need is the shell travel time, because the shell travel time is going to give me a reference point on my reticule where I'm going to later make adjustments if need be. So I look at it and it's right now around 6 seconds. However, I look at the map and I look at the ship's movement in game and I see that the ship is attempting to make a turn and it's currently heading towards me. Knowing that a cruiser is coming towards me, I know that eventually when I do get around to shooting, the cruiser would have closed the range a little bit more. Also, I'm actually closing the range toward it as well. So I know that the actual shell travel time is probably going to be closer to the 5 second point. So my reference point on my reticule is going to be at where the 5 is. In case I need to make any corrections, I will make it with that particular uh, reference point in mind. Next thing you gotta know is, okay, the ship seems to be traveling at high speed as it's making this turn, so that means it is gonna be using its full turning distance, so I've gotta aim a little bit closer to me, a little bit ahead of it, and in a three-dimensional sense, if you think about it, my shells are hopefully gonna land at a point where the enemy ship is gonna turn straight into the shells and take them right in the critical areas, um, you know, hopefully I get a citadel. So in that particular case, I fired my shells at 11.05 kilometers. The enemy cruiser was at the time starting at 11.4, but as you can see, the Otago did require another 300 or so meters to turn, putting it squarely where my shells are landing, and I managed to bag myself a citadel and secure that kill very, very easily. But remember where I was stressing practice is key, and that practice is really the most important thing when dealing with aiming? There's a reason for that, is because this is the clip, the same clip, in real time. And as you can see, for you to actually collect all the information, set all your uh, reticule reference points, look at the mini-map, decide where the ship is going, and then fire off the rounds and make sure that they connect, it's a very, very, very short period of time. And if you don't practice it, you're not going to be able to pull it off reliably. All right, let's take a look at the next clip. In this one, I'm engaging a Yamato that's slightly further away than the Otago from the last video. So how am I gonna use that information that I used in the last one to help me here? All right, so first off, I need, again, shell travel time to where I'm aiming because that's gonna give me the reference point on my reticule. This particular case, it's gonna take approximately eight seconds. So eight is where uh, my reference point will be. And that's the point I'm going to aim on the actual ship, hoping my shells will actually land there. And it's actually shown with that red arrow. So as you can see, I'm trying to put the um, shots somewhere near the magazines of where the Yamato is. Next up, I need to look at the minimap, and I see that the Yamato is coming quite sharply towards me. And if I look at the smoke, it's quite... Uh, flat, which means this Yamato is moving at high speed. So I'm going to try to give it um, quite a you know bit of I guess vertical lead as well because the ship is approaching me. And as you can see, I fired initially at around 14.3 kilometers, while the Yamato is all the way at around 14.8. Knowing that by the time my shells take the seven seconds to travel over there, that Yamato would have closed that distance and it will probably run itself into the shells. So let's watch these shells as they make progress towards this enemy Yamato. And right around here, I'm already starting to see that, oh, okay, the shells are not landing exactly where I had aimed them. They're landing a little bit further behind. So if I was to make corrections to the next salvo, I would move my reticule a little bit further ahead and give it a little bit more lead. And the same principles applies when you're shooting at targets that are really, really far away from you. Pro approaching probably 20 kilometers. So here we go, there's a Miyoko, really low health, and I really want to grab this kill. 
first things first, look at the time to, uh, to the reticule, which is around 11.3 seconds. So I set my first reference point there. However, I see that the smoke coming out of the ship is literally horizontal, meaning this Miyoko is going at full speed and it's extremely fast, so I'm going to give it some extra lead. Next thing to do is take a look at the map, see that this Miyoko is actually moving away from me. So I'm going to move my reticule a little bit further away so that this Miyoko is basically going to sail into where my shells are going to go. Really, really important thing I want to point out right now is if you look at the map, you can clearly see that the ship is sailing away from me. However, if you actually look at the ship's model, it looks like it's just simply sailing east to west and it's actually showing just a flat broadside when really the ship is actually going slightly away, which means that you shot it uh, with the line of the reticule right at the waterline of the ship, you would have missed completely. So even though in this particular shot I had calculated the lead and actually given it additional lead because of the speed of the ship, when my shells get there you see that I am still not hitting the all important citadel areas, I'm hitting a little bit behind. Luckily of course this Miyoko was low enough HP so the shells that did hit it was enough to secure me the kill. I actually needed to lead even a little bit more. So let's take a look at this clip in real time and you'll see just how fast the ship is moving. And here's this action. Kind of was a snapshot, Turn my guns around, led the target. See how fast the ship is really moving? That's why I had to give it that extra lead. Didn't look like it on the slow motion, but when you actually see it in real time, the ship is moving quite a little bit faster. So I did have to give it that extra little bit of horizontal lead. And even then, I was uh, not leading enough. Need to lead a little bit more in order to hit that citadel. And finally, I got to talk about one last thing, which is a method of learning how to adjust your shots. And this is the fire one, adjust fire all method. So first things first, take a look at what I'm doing here. I've already looked at the uh, shell travel time, so I've set my reference marker. I've looked at where the ship is moving, and the ship is moving both towards me and also away from me. So it's coming in, it's angled in towards me, but it's also moving north. So I have to set my actual target reticule a little bit further away because the ship again is going to sail into those shots. So um, also looked at the speed of the Iowa and obviously the smoke is almost fully horizontal which means this Iowa is going at high speed. So I fire my first shot right there, those two shells, and I'm taking a look and I'm trying to keep track of it and it's like okay looks like when those shells fully land they're going to fall behind. So we adjust my aim, move it a little bit further ahead, give it more of that horizontal lead. See that my shell impacts right at where the uh, rear turret is, but on top, which wasn't enough. Fire another salvo after changing and adjusting. And so this is the rest of my salvo. And you will see how this one lands in a much better place and I'm able to get substantially better hits than that first two shells I put down range. One thing to keep in mind is that while it looks like the eye resistance to me isn't changing, remember that it's because I'm moving towards him and this eye was moving away. So really where I've aimed it initially, which was around 15.1 kilometers, is exactly where that eye would move to and that's why he took those hits. And that's all folks for this video on aiming. I'm hoping that the advice I've provided you in this video will be beneficial to your performance in game and that your hit rates go up. Aside from that, if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to like this video and sub to my channel as I'll be making more of these in the upcoming future. Take care, have a great week, get out there, practice, sink a lot of ships, and I'll see you all on the high seas.